Hi everyone, this is Hoke Smith with Nuix and I uh, wanted to use this video to give you an update as of uh, July 2019 on where we are with insider threat uh, prevention, detection, investigation, or triage in the Nuix Adaptive Security uh, product. And there's really four areas that I wanted to highlight for you in this video. Um, the first is around visibility and control. Uh, if you know the Adaptive Security product, you know that it provides um, a very high degree of uh, visibility into activities on endpoints and the ability to detect things that are potentially malicious or suspicious, as well as prevent them. Um, in the most recent version of the product, we've added uh, out-of-the-box detection and protection rules that are specifically focused on insider threat. So they're designed to give the enterprise uh, a leg up on detecting things like data exfiltration, misuse of systems, etc. We've also added the ability to automatically capture screenshots in response to malicious or suspicious behaviors. This makes for a more efficient way to conduct active monitoring or um, in-depth monitoring of particular systems where we suspect that um, there may be something uh, going on that's uh, a violation of policy. We've also um, integrated the collection service uh, within Nuix so that um, from the dashboard, the adaptive security operator can conduct a uh, forensically sound collection of files like, for example, um, browser history. And I'll show that here in a second in the demo. And then finally, uh, we've integrated Adaptive with the Apache Kafka uh, message bus, which basically allows us to publish um, alert events to the Kafka to the Kafka service. And from there, um, they can be pushed out into the enterprise either for in-depth analytics when combined with other data or as part of a aggregate risk scoring, for example, to note um, whether uh, perhaps suspicious use of removable media device uh, on an endpoint, which is reported by adaptive security, might feed a um, broader calculus of uh, insider threat risk that looks across multiple types of data. So with all of these things, um, we've, I think, taken uh, some pretty compelling steps towards making the product even more valuable for insider threat. So I just want to start with the visibility and control um, topic here and look at something that we've done recently within the existing uh, filter engine uh, rules to enable um, security to have greater control over USB or removable media device uh, activity on the network. And what I will demonstrate here is a scenario where a user plugs an unauthorized uh, removable media device into, uh, into a system. And you can see here um, we have a normal uh, user system. It's connected to the internet. But when an unauthorized device is plugged in, Uh, the host is automatically quarantined from the network. So I'm going to disconnect this device and then we'll go back and look at what uh, the, the uh, security operator would see. Looking at the adaptive security dashboard, we can see a few alerts. Um, we see that our removable media device was inserted or removed outside of working hours because we're tracking um, when the device is actually used. Um, we just have a global alert saying that a device was inserted, an unauthorized device was inserted, and in this case, we're going to isolate that. Now, we actually determined that it was um, unauthorized based on two um, characteristics. One, uh, the actual uh, manufacturer didn't recognize didn't match the uh, recognized or authorized brand. And secondly, the device serial didn't contain um, an authorized uh, string in it or something indicative of an authorized uh, serial number. You can see it there. So that's actually what triggered this uh, network isolation event. Now, if the operator wanted to um, disable network isolation on the endpoint, that's as easy as selecting uh, network isolation disable.
and then just a moment. Uh, the machine is back online. So the next scenario that I'd like to address is uh, file sharing. And this is something that um, we've attacked uh, in part with automated uh, screenshot capabilities. So um, typical file sharing uh, scenario might be user visits um, a file sharing site that requires minimal credentials, then creates a zip file and uploads that zip file to the file sharing site. And there's our proprietary .7 zip file. So the adaptive console is going to pick that up and we're going to recognize a number of behaviors associated with that. Um, the first thing we see here is that uh, the user visited a site that was uh, on a list that we're watching, the jump share list, um, and we're going to take a series of screenshots in response to that. That's totally configurable and adaptive. You can see here that we're going to take one screenshot per second for a total of 10 seconds in response to this particular behavior of uh, the browser visiting the jump share site. Um, the next thing we can see is that um, this is actually related to uh, a signature issue with the 7-zip um, program. But this one here is uh, telling us that the user created a, a zip file. And then shortly after that, we see that more, more than 250K was uploaded to an unknown location. So this alert is triggering off the fact that um, the IP address that the, the file was loaded to uh, is not within an approved range. This one is triggering off the fact that the uh, upload occurred just using the Chrome browser. So of course the next question is what was the file that was actually um, transferred and with adaptive uh, that is a relatively easy question to answer by analyzing event data. So here's 7-zip process here, creating the proprietary .7-zip file. And if we wanted to examine that, we can actually download the file. Uh, download the individual file and save it back to our server. I'm not going to do that now because I want to show you something else, which is the screenshots that we took in response to this alert. Okay, so... As soon as uh, jump share was uh, resolved, uh, we started taking screenshots. And you can see there's the user copy activity and then uh, the creation of the zip file. Um, so that's the screenshot, uh, automated screenshot um, in response to the behavior. Now, the other thing that we can do that I mentioned earlier is we can actually do a forensic collection directly from the console here. So if we had seen an alert like this and we wanted to, um, for example, examine all of the browser artifacts uh, from this machine, or we wanted to acquire those artifacts as part of um, a case that we were building to retain and needed to um, have a defensible process for that, then we can use our collect data tool here. And that will offer me several options for uh, the type of um, collection that I want to do. In this case, what I want to do is a browser history, collect and relocate. So that's going to collect um, the files and then move them to a shared drive, a pre-designated shared drive. Now I've got one of those that I did earlier somewhere here. And I'll just show you what it looks like. So here's my um, file safe uh, collection of browser history. So this is a nice uh, forensically sound uh, container with files in it. And um, I've also got very detailed log data about um, how this collection went. And this collection log here is going to show me um, my MD5 hashes and 
the past that I was that this was collected from uh, and uh, assorted other information to um, allow me to maintain visibility into the chain of custody of this evidence. So um, hopefully that gives you a sense of what's um, possible now in adaptive security with regard to insider threat. Um, there's a tremendous amount of additional capabilities that I didn't have time to show in this brief video, uh, but hopefully now you get a sense at least of the approach that we've taken. Thank you very much for your time.